Hi everyone, these are the newly released Spring 2014 7th grade TCAP practice test for math. Uh, this is item number one. What is the value of this expression? Now I'm not going to lie, I would say that I would probably use a calculator on this question. It's At this point, it's just sort of um, a calculation question more so than anything else. You're not analyzing it, you're just sort of solving it. So I will do the calculator in the front, that way if that's what you're going to do, you can just be donezo and move on. Um, if not, I would stick around and I'll show you how to do it by hand. Now, the reality is when you're using a calculator, it's only going to do what you tell it. So if you tell it to do something that it doesn't know how to do, then it's not going to give you the right answer. It's not the calculator's fault. It's not smart. It just knows how to do certain things based on what you tell it to do. It runs scripts, basically. So anyway, let's just go ahead and type it in. This is the TI-34 MultiView. They've put out a new version, obviously, and it actually simplifies usually pretty nicely, I think, or whatever generic uh, scientific calculator that you're using. You might have to adjust a little bit, but anything with a fraction in it is probably a good thing. So I'm going to go ahead and type it in. Um, 0 0.4 divided by 1 fourth. And if you're using this one, all of your fraction stuff and decimal things are like just in these two buttons and the simplify button here. So times 3 over 5 plus 0 0.7. Close it out and I'll hit enter and it'll give me this and that's not any of the answers because it's in decimal form so I need to convert it into a fraction. Above the uh, fraction button which is the n over d numerator over denominator there's something that has arrows for f and d so hit second fraction decimal and it gives you this still none of the answers it's because it's not reduced we need to simplify the answer so I'm gonna hit simplify hit enter I don't know yet here's what you're looking for once you get it to what you think might be its simplest form keep hitting it until you get the same answer at least twice see here I have 225 twice in a row, which means it's finally simplified all the way down. Many calculators will go ahead and reduce it all the way down for you, but in this case, just keep hitting simplify until you see it twice, because it means it's telling you that it can't simplify anymore. This is the best I can do. What do you want from me? So the answer to this one would be D. Now, what happens if you don't have a calculator? Well, it doesn't make you a bad person. Let's talk about doing this one by hand. And if you have a calculator and that's what you're going to use, you know, you're done. That's it. So, in this case, I want to make sure that all of my numbers are in the same form. I'm going to put them all in fractions. You could put them all in decimals if you're so inclined. Uh, one fourth would be 0 0.25, three fifths is 0 0.6. You're welcome to do that. I'm just not going to. I'm going to put them in fraction form because that's what I feel like doing. So, 4 out of 10 divided by, and that sort of looks like a 16, so I'm going to fix it, uh, 1 fourth times 3 over 5 plus 7 over 10. And before I move any further, I will say that order of operations being taught it this way, PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, that kind of thing, you know, it's a nice mnemonic device, but the problem is it doesn't tell you the whole story. It's easier if you put it in a pyramid form because it shows you just like this, that multiply and divide aren't really that different. And that's the worst leaning tower ever, but pretend it's a pyramid in your brain. Um, so anyway, parentheses does come first, so we'll have to do this first. Exponents comes next, there's not any exponents here. But multiply and divide, multiply does not come before divide in terms of what you do first. Everything on, the lev on each level, you just do left to right. So whatever comes first between multiply or divide, that's the one that you do first. The same thing with add and subtract. No matter what add tells you, and it never shuts up about it, it's not better than subtract. If subtract comes first on the left of operations, you do it first, before add. So PEMDAS is a little bit limited, just saying. Anyway, let's do this uh, group here. I need to find a common denominator. Well, 5 times 2 is 10, so to do 3 fifths, to make something with a denominator of 10, I need to multiply by 2. Same thing up top, 6 tenths. So I'm going to rewrite everything. I'm a big champion of writing things down because it's easy to get lost in the middle of it, and then what are you going to do? You just make some careless mistake and you miss an easy question. So 6 over 10 plus 
7 over 10. 6 plus 7 is 13 over 10. And now that I've gotten it down to one term, don't need the parentheses anymore. Now, like I said before, multiply is not better than divide. Divide may feel that way, it's got some self-esteem issues, but divide is just as good as multiply as long as it comes on the left. Going left to right here, first thing it says to do is divide, so that's what we're going to do first. And I'm going to kind of move over here and do the divide. I'm going to do dividing fractions using the old keep it, flip it, switch it method that I learned a long time ago. Keep the first one, flip the second one, switch the sign. Keep it, flip it, switch it. So 4 times 4 is 16, 10 times 1 is 10. So now this takes on a different feel as it becomes 16 over 10 times 13 over 10. Now from here, not a lot of fancy stuff required. I'll need to do 10 times 10 in the denominator and do 16 times 13 in the numerator. Since I said I do all this by hand, that's what I'm doing. Sorry if you learn to multiply in a different way. 208 over 100. Now, that's not one of the answers, right? But I have to finish simplifying it, like dividing it. How many times does 100 go into 208? Well, one of them's called 100, and the other one's called 200, so there's probably two of them in there. So I end up with 2 and 8 100s. Now, in terms of simplification, um, you could say, okay, well, 2 goes into both, which would make it uh, 4 here, and then uh, 50 on the bottom. And then, okay, well, 2 goes into those as well. But I could think of it as, okay, well, 8 has a 4 in it, because, you know, 8 divided by 4 is 2, so I'll say 2. And 100 has 4 in it, because when $1, which is 100 pennies, you have 4 quarters. So I'm going to divide by 4 and get 25. And that's my answer. So really, for this one, if you have a calculator, it'll save you a bunch of time. If you don't have a calculator, which is just fine, it just takes a little bit longer. Find the methodology that you like best and what form you like. If you're a decimal you know, advocate, do decimals, whatever you feel comfortable with. It's your test, and you're just trying to show that you know how to do it and uh, just make the best score possible so the people who make the standardized test can feel like you know, they got what they needed and you know, you could beat their test, which kind of sticks it to them for making you take it in the first place. There it is.